So um, some of you will know Colin and Pam. Some of you will, will not know them at all. So they were part of the church for 20 odd years and Colin led the eldership team for 12, 12 of those. But they've been in South Africa for the past six and a half years. So they're going in their seventh year. Um, and so we're just, we've got them. It's, a, it's great to have you here. Thanks for taking time out. They've been busy doing all sorts of things while they've been here. But it's great. It's a privilege to have you with us. So can we give Colin and Pam a huge hand? Colin's gone weepy, oh no. <laughs> hello, Guildborn! Yeah! Um, no, I just wanted to say hello, and I don't know a lot of you, so my name's Pam, and well done for keeping going. That's what I wanted to say. And um, yeah, you got a building, I can't believe it. Um, so Pete Batson gave me a little tour when we arrived, which was so nice and calm and lovely for me to get the hang of what's what. Because I was there the day Pete Batson first talked about having a building. And I know I had a buggy with me, so that shows how long ago it was. So it was actually kind of lovely to have Pete, of all people, show me around. So yay for you and well done, and it's just really, really nice to see you all. Thank you. She always steals my thunder, my wife. I, I can't tell you how, how glad I am to be with you today. Um, it's a really strange experience, honestly, to see you so many familiar faces. You haven't grown a day older since I saw you, I promise you. And, uh, um, I, it's been a weird experience. Let me just share some stuff from my heart here. I, as I was coming in, I, honestly... I was nervous coming this morning because I felt like it's going to be a grieving time of kind of seeing the church that we invested our lives in. And, you know, and honestly, you know, in the six years, six and a half years we've been away, um, it's, it's felt like we've, you know, kind of gone slightly different paths. And, uh, and so that, um, you know, that, that was... Uh, you know, I've kind of ignored it, honestly, and, you know, and obviously I've kept in touch with some of you, but as a church, you know, I think, oh, we've, we've kind of gone different ways a bit. And so I was a bit nervous of coming and thinking, oh, this is not my people anymore. And, um, and uh, I just was amongst you today, and I just felt God say, this is your family. This is where you belong. You're part of this. So, um, you know, and I felt quite... So, yeah, so I want to thank you for that. Thanks for having me today. Thanks for, for your friendship and your love. You know, we, we, uh, we value that more than you can imagine. I mean, you know, we, I'm, I'm not the best one at keeping in touch, but just the texts, the replies on the blogs, those kind of things, some of you know what we're talking about. They really do matter. I want to thank you for that and thank you for your friendship and your partnership. And, and funnily enough, I think that it's going to go. We're, we're going to be partners for life, sorry to say. That's the way it's going to be. Um, so I've got a very short period of time to try and uh, do a number of things. Uh, I do want to share what I felt was on God's heart for you from the Bible, um, but I also want to try and tie that in with some of our news and what we're up to now. And just to try and uh, to help you to feel connected to us and to find ways to do that even more. So I wanted to start off with this. Um, oh, I can't even look. Where am I? The, uh, my, yeah, there we are. So, oh, yeah, thank you. You're so technological, aren't you, you guys? So good. So uh, I'm just going to speak very briefly from this little story of Jesus, Luke chapter 19, if you did want to follow it. Many of you will have 
uh, read this, you'd have taught this in Sunday school, you'd have heard the story. It's of that little guy, Zacchaeus, sitting up a tree, waiting for Jesus to come. Zacchaeus was an outcast. He was a tax collector. In South Africa, we would uh, we'd call him an impimpi. So any Africans here would say impimpi. Have you heard that word? No. no. <laughs> this is in a... In, uh, in Kotsa, it's, uh, it's a word that means it's like a spy, or it's someone in the apartheid era who would side with the, with the governing white authorities um, against their own people. And so we, we call him an impimpi. And uh, I was teaching this to a group of, of guys, Kotsa guys, and uh, I said, I'd explain it to them. Yeah, he's a tax collector, he's gone against his own people, he's working for the Romans, and, you know, he's like, you would call him an impimpi, and, but I didn't pronounce that word correctly, and I, I, pronounced, I said ipimpi, which sounds the same, hey? Impimpi, ipimpi. So, so, any course of speakers here? No, it's a good job. I can't tell you what it means. <laughs> but let's just say, let's just say that I lost the room completely. <laughs> it was one of, those, one of those moments as a preacher where you go, what's going on? And you know, like when Rodney used to talk about the squirrel's nuts and stuff like that. Uh, was anyone there for that preach? Some of you remember that. It was that, it was that moment where I just lost the room. Um, so you can try and look up for yourselves what that means, but it's embarrassing, let's put it like that. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Jesus says, come, spend a day with me. I'm coming to your house. And uh, as, you, as you know from that story, he kind of, as, as Zacchaeus changes his life in that moment, in that day, something happens to him and changes him from being an outcast, from being someone who is captive to the love of money, and it's destroyed his life. And somehow, in this moment with Jesus, he says, do you know what? I'm giving it all back. You know, if I've wronged anyone, then I'm going to pay them back four times. And I'm giving half my, my wealth away. And Jesus says this. says, it's a strange thing. He says, salvation has come to this house. I love that, because often we'll talk about salvation. It's a very religious word, isn't it? We've kind of got this word, salvation, that belongs to us, to the church. And we, we say, you know, we're going to preach about salvation, and you're going to put your hands up. Jesus doesn't do any of that. He says, listen, what this, what's happened here? Salvation. Salvation has come to this house. And he gets very excited about it because salvation, if you look back, a uh, quick Bible study for you, the first time it's used, that word salvation, was about when, when the Israelites came out of Egypt. And you know that there was this amazing time as they, as they came out uh, from, from slavery. They were held captive under slavery. And they came out and they went through the Red Sea there. And then... You know, the Red Sea came down on, on all the enemies, on those who were holding them captive. And finally, these Israelites, they stood on the bank and said, we're free. We really are free. And the song of Exodus chapter 15, verse 2, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. It's a, it means freedom. It means to be rescued. That's what happened to Zacchaeus. He was being rescued from the powers that were enslaving him. And Jesus says this to finish off. He says, you know what? This is what I'm all about. I've come to seek and to save the lost. The lost. That's an interesting word, the lost. It doesn't mean that you've taken a wrong turn and you've got, you know, you've gone into a new town and you're, oh, you've gone off on a wrong... It's not, it's not that kind of lost. The, if you want to look the Greek word, which I'm sure Mick Shaw will tell us, 
If he's, it, do you know what it means, Mick? That word, lost. Ah, you're listening. I'm glad you're listening, Mick. I'm keeping you awake on the back row there. <laughs> so it actually means to be destroyed. That's the Greek word, to be destroyed. See, Jesus was concerned about those. Not just that we had taken a wrong turn. He saw humanity as those who were lost and were being destroyed. I don't know if you've ever, as a parent, I, I, I would imagine probably every single one of you that is a parent has at one time or other, especially here, you've been down at the, the beach and you... You're looking for your little four or five-year-old who's toddled off. And you'll keep it, you know you've got to keep your eye on them, don't you? Because all sorts of things happen down at the seafront that you know, you're concerned about for your little toddler. And your toddler loves it down there and they love running around on the grass or the beach or whatever. And you're looking thinking, no, I want to keep my eye on that one. Now, I don't know, am I the only one, the only lax parent that has taken their eye off their kid and suddenly you look and say, my goodness, where are they? Where's my little Johnny, my little Teresa, where have they gone? They've, they've been, have they run off? Have they got into trouble in the sea? What if someone's taken them? Have you? Yeah. Some of you have. Yeah, you wouldn't want to admit it here, would you? But... <laughs> Actually, I've had a couple of times that, that sense of, it's like almost a panic. It's like, my goodness, what can happen? Where, where, where are they? What could have gone on? And I, I remember this because I, I met a lady, I was walking down on Goring Gap once, and a lady in her full panic just shouted at me, I've lost my son. And this little boy had got lost, and she was, she'd been running around for the last sort of, five minutes or something, just getting more and more anxious until she decided, and so we had to call the police and we looked, and now thankfully the little boy was found, just had toddled off and she hadn't seen him, but my goodness, for those five or ten minutes, all these thoughts going through your mind, has that little boy been taken? How would you feel? You know, as a parent, that your child is taken. I want to tell you, that's the kind of heart of God. When, he, when Jesus says, this is why I've come, to, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save those who are being destroyed, those who are taken captive, those who need to be set free. That's the heart of God. That's the heart that Jesus has for people. The heart he has for us. The heart that he had when you were lost, when you were far away, when you were held captive. And he came, and this word salvation means he's come to rescue. He's come to set you free. These, the gospel writers, if you like, they, they talk about Jesus' actions as though he's kind of circling round, just these outer skirmishes with various powers that are holding people captive, the demonized, the sick, those who are, who are, who are ostracized from, the, from the, the society there. He's circling around, setting them free, healing them, rescuing them. But actually, there's one thing in his mind. He wants to go to the very heart of the greatest captivity that we face, the power of death. And Jesus came to go face to face with that enemy and destroy its power forever. That's what Jesus came to do, to rescue us, to set us free so that we can be released, to be the people that he always meant us to be, to not be in slavery anymore. He loves us with a kind of passion that even a parent couldn't imagine. I just want you to... Dwell on that just for a moment. How Jesus loves you. 
Have you, have you felt the passion of God for yourself? How he, how he loves to rescue, to save you. How, how it was his pleasure to come and die in your place. To take on the powers of death that held you captive. He did it gladly. He did it with, with, with passion. He loved it because he wanted to see you set free. Lord, we want to ask you to reveal this right now amongst us. It's something only your Holy Spirit can do. But we want to know this passion that's in your heart for the lost. To seek and to save. To come and to rescue. That we wouldn't feel far away from you. Some of us have done some stupid things. But actually, you're the one that comes to rescue. And you're so committed not to pushing us away because we're dirty. But to rescuing us and bringing us right close. Lord, please help us. Those of us who don't feel worthy, feel like we've messed up, feel like we're on the edge, that will feel your passion again today for, for your children to save us, to heal us, to make us right. God, we're not too far from you. We're not too far away from you. Thank you, Lord. So... That's really the foundation of what I want to share with you about our journey, particularly over the last few years. We've, some of you will remember, we went off in this blaze of glory, prayer tunnel, lots of <laughs> blessing. And, uh, and, you know, we hit South Africa and it hit us, honestly. And we were, we were reeling for a few months and not quite sure what we were doing there and Probably for four years, we were just learning and wondering why we're there. Why were we really there? Um, we're trying to start a church, trying to work with some other churches. But actually, you know, it was tough. It's really tough. Um, probably the last couple of years, we've started to see something of what God's got in his heart for us. So I just want to show you the next slide. Is, um a little map of, the, of where the most unreached people currently are in the world. Those ones in red. I think that's, those ones in red are where there are less than one in every 16,000 people are actually Christians. One in 16,000. It means that those people who are living there will probably never meet another Christian in their lives. And I want you just to reflect on that. And, and I wonder if you can imagine the passion in the heart of God to seek and to save the lost. What does that look like for the people in those countries, in those little groups of, of red, particularly the red ones, the ones that, that will never hear the name of Jesus from another Christian, will never know, will always think that this Christianity or this name Jesus is just a, a word used for the white guys, for the Westerners, nothing to do with them whatsoever. What is it in the heart of God for his children for those that he loves in those areas. And that's where, I guess, over the last couple of years, this clearer direction, this clearer sense of calling has come to those that we're working with now to say, God, give us inroads into these people groups. Show us how to do it. And really, I'm coming to you today to say that this isn't something that is just for those churches, that are, those countries that are nearby those people. But actually, this is something for the church global to own, to partner together with, to say, this is something God has given us to do, to start to reach out into these communities, to reach these people. Now, it's, it's almost impossible 
I would never, ever tell you to send someone from here into another culture to try and plant a church. It's, it's a disaster. Let's be, let's be frank about it. It's really hard. You have to do so much in terms of language and training and uh, acclimatizing and family stuff. And uh, wow. And then you're going to try and plant a church. No. I would much rather actually try and strengthen those guys who are already there, already working in those places, already preaching the gospel, and they just need support and help. And so this is where our mission has come in. So the next slide shows you actually where, I, I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, I thought your, your technology was a bit better than it is, sorry. <laughs> Okay, but you, I don't know if you can see this, but down in South Africa, there's a little green dot here. That's M Pamela and myself, all right? <laughs> this is where we are. But the red dots are apostolic teams that we're now working with in these different areas. Um, and as you can see, I don't know if you remember, but the, all the red dots that I showed you before, the most unreached people in the world, are all up this coast and then across here. So God has given us access into some of these places to start to work alongside local church planters, local apostolic teams that are church planting in these areas. Okay, so that's the... the, the, the Places that God's opened up to us, uh, in particular, because we don't know it all. You know that, don't you? We have very little to bring to these guys. Can you imagine going and saying, oh, yeah, we're going to come and teach you anything? You know, they're like, no, sorry. <laughs> teach us. Help us. We're desperate for your help. Um, you know, we need, to, we need to receive from them. Am I right? Um, but there are some things that we've got, you know, in terms of theological training, stuff like that, that we can teach. So the next slide shows you a little bit of our... Uh, this is the course that we've been uh, mainly working on, a biblical theology course. Um, that's now been translated uh, into, into three languages. Um, the, uh, there's Portuguese, there's Kosa, and there's Swahili. The Kosa one is still, under, is still, still ongoing, but the, the rest of them, I think, are actually finished. We've, we've already translated and printed the Portuguese one, so that that's now out in circulation with guys going around Mozambique. Um, so the Swahili one, we're waiting for the money to do that, but the guy, Fabian, who's got all these contacts in the Swahili-speaking world, told me, I need 2,000 of those. So give me 2,000 of those booklets. To I've got these pastors and leaders that we want to train over here. So opportunities are huge. Resources are very little. We're a little, actually our group of churches are all in the rural areas, not got uh, a huge amount of money and resources, which is why it needs to be a partnership uh, that we're all a part of together. Okay, so I think that's about it. Um, the, the end of the, the last, keep going with the slides. Oh yeah, so we, these are the other courses that we're working on. I haven't got time to tell you about those. Next slide is just a little bit about how you can uh, link up with us. Uh, we've, Pam's amazing, as you uh, probably know, uh, keeping in touch and writing blogs and stuff. So that's the blog. Uh, Emmaus Friendships is the blog that we're, um, that, that we're trying to do to keep you in touch with all the stuff that's happening in our world with training. Uh, if you want to be part of that, you can either text your email address to us on that number, or you can visit that website and you can go and put your address in yourself and then you can keep up in touch. Really, I'm, I'm looking for partnership, honestly. I'm looking for those individuals amongst us here that God puts a sense of passion in to say, I want to be, I want to have an inheritance amongst the nations. I want to have an inheritance amongst unreached people. And probably the likelihood of you ever going there and preaching the gospel is low. But actually you can have a massive impact through your praying, through your giving financially, even to, uh, you know, there, there'll be some trips and stuff like that that I'd love to, to take you on if any of you are interested to just show you a bit more about, you know, what's going on in those areas. So that's the, 
the offer um, really is to say, partner with us. Uh, you know, I, I love it when people feel very, you know, sort of stirred up and say, yeah, we're going to pray for you. And, uh, you know, they slip 50 quid into my pocket and whatever, you know, I, I'm never adverse to that kind of stuff. But, now don't let me discourage you from that, by the way. <laughs> but actually, we're after partnership, longer lasting partnerships that say we're in this together, that we're working together to bring this great gospel to allow the heart of Jesus to so impact us that we want to see those who will never hear the gospel reached for Jesus. And I know you've got many other areas that you can do it. I know we're, we're a tiny thing and that, but for some of you, I really feel, I, I feel like God spoke to me this morning, said this is a family and some of you will want to, will feel convicted by God that this is part of your journey to, to work with, to journey with us, to partner with us in this. And so I'm trusting that God will reveal that to you, to your hearts, and that we'll continue in this relationship that God has granted. So that's my pitch. But most of all, I long for this church to have the heart of God, to feel the passion of God for the world that he loves, for the town of Worthing that he loves, and for the nations of the earth that have never heard his name. That's the, that's the big call that God's put on my heart for you guys. And that you wouldn't get so insular. Worthing is a, is a beautiful town, it's a lovely town, it's a great town to be, but it's very small. It's very small, and you can start to think that Worthing is all there is, and it really needs the grace of God to lift your eyes to see the nations of the earth and to have an inheritance there, not just here. Are you with me? Amen. Let's pray. Eh? Lord, we're trusting that the Holy Spirit here will guide us into into the truth and into the heart of God, into what's true uh, if through what I've said and that you will touch lives even this morning to give them an inheritance in the nations, to give them an inheritance amongst the unreached people. Lord, I know you've called us there. Thank you for this great family that you sent us from and I pray that this church will know the passion and the heartbeat of God for their, for their town, for those who don't know Jesus across the earth Lord that they would start to feel faith and passion for these people that have never heard the gospel Lord lift up their eyes by your Holy Spirit, do something that no one person can do and keep that burning desire deep within them, to see the gospel go out further and further. Only you can do this, Lord. We want to worship you and thank you for how you've, you've rescued us, that you've set us free, so that we could be the hands and feet of God in the earth. Bless us, Lord God, to be a blessing to the world, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, Pam, do you mind coming up? We're going, to, we're going to sing a song to, to finish. We just want to pray for, pray for the two of you. Jennifer's going to come and lead us. I don't know if there's anyone else, I don't know, anyone else who wants to come and lay hands on Colin and Pam. I'm looking at you. are perfectly close friends. You can come, why don't you come up as Jennifer, as Jennifer um, prays. But yeah, we want to, want to pray for you. Go on, Jennifer. Lord, it is such a privilege to be together this morning in this place, to have our eyes open to that great continent of Africa and indeed the world and all those spots where nobody has heard the gospel. And we thank you, Lord, for this vision this morning which Colin has shared with us. And Lord, I pray that in this congregation this morning, in this building, there will be those 
who will say, Lord, I'll go. Lord, I'll pray. Lord, I'll give. And in the future days, we will see a harvest through this um, message this morning, Lord, in the years to come, that your gospel, your love may be made known to those people that Colin has had in his mind as he's spoken, and to those wonderful men and their wives uh, who have also answered the call already. My word, what bravery they've got. Lord, I pray for Colin and for Pam in these days that they will be blessed, empowered, at peace, protected, and move forward, Lord, in Africa to the great coming of the kingdom of God in that place. And we thank you for this partnership. Lord, you have spoken this morning. You have spoken to us about a partnership with Colin and Pam. And we would respond to that. And we would be blessed in it. And we pray your blessing upon this wonderful couple. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And bless all these people over here, Lord, (laughs) who are giggling. Make them giggle more, Lord. More of your spirit here. More of your spirit here, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.